What does it take to get a multi-million dollar tactical fighter and its highly trained crew over the target at the prescribed time in order to execute a successful mission? Is it chance or just a good set of circumstances? But it'll never happen that way. Many people contribute in many ways. Operations, intelligence, and maintenance people, everyone has a hand in it. But there's nothing haphazard in the operation. Detailed planning, precise execution, and a hell of a lot of hard work all combine to produce a successful mission. And one of the key contributions to the whole ball of wax comes from the men of the munitions maintenance squadron. Every man in the MMS is part of a number one team. Each man is an essential part of this team. It is important that every individual know and understand the organizational makeup of the MMS to ensure operational efficiency. Each man will have lots to learn and lots to do. So, where do we start? I'm reasonably sure that all of you have a number of questions about the MMS. And most important of all, where you will fit into the system. First, let me brief you on the organization of the squadron. Then, I'll show various areas of operation and where you'll be working. As outlined by the directives contained in AFM 66-1, the MMS is organized as a centralized maintenance and support agency under the Deputy Commander for Logistics and the Chief of Maintenance. The total function of the munitions maintenance squadron is spelled out here on the organizational chart. Each of the blocks represents a key part of mission accomplishment. It poses a significant challenge to each of us in the MMS. This is my position here as commander. The next link in the chain is the maintenance supervisor. This man, through his office, controls and directs the workload for the major support areas, namely munitions maintenance and storage, munitions supply, EOD, and munitions services. Accomplishment of our overall mission will occupy the bulk of your time and demand the greatest measure of your effort and concentration. Oh, before I go any further, have you all been assigned quarters? Sir. Are you having any trouble with your records? No, or pay? No, sir. Very good. If anything does come up, well, get with the first sergeant immediately. I deliberately refrain from going into any details on the various functions of the blocks portrayed on the organizational chart. At this point in time, I feel you've got enough to contend with, so I'll leave the details for a more appropriate time. Where do you, as an individual, fit into the scheme of things here? We could hop into a station wagon and take a grand tour of the areas involved, but that would take a better part of the day. Or we could sit right here and by using audio-visual equipment, see the same things in a matter of a few minutes. Here it is. We're going to take a quick look at four areas. Number one, the munitions maintenance and storage area. Number two, the weapons loading area. Number three, missile maintenance and storage. And four, EOD, explosive ordnance disposal. Now, the munitions maintenance and storage area. This is the home of the 461 types. The dimensions and the physical layout will, of course, vary from base to base, but the functions will remain the same. In support of the TAC mission, you will be responsible for the receipt and storage of all munitions destined for use by the wing aircraft. Other tasks in this area relate to the assembly, buildup, and checkout of the various types of munitions prior to delivery to the flight line. Perhaps the final step in your particular area of responsibility is the delivery of ready munitions to the flight line holding area where the weapons load crews will take over. So, that quite logically takes us to the flight line where the 462s operate. These are the weapons load crews. 
Oh, incidentally, Lieutenant, this is also where you, as a 4621, will be spending the great majority of your time. During this particular part of our operation within the MMS, the load crew consists of four men. Number one is the crew chief with a checklist. Number two is the cockpit man. Number three is the pylon man. And number four is the bomb lift truck operator and also a munitions prep man. Their responsibility includes all functional checks, munitions preparation, the actual hookup or loading of the weapon, plus all post-loading checks that must be carried out prior to launch. You will be working with bombs, missiles, and gun pods. And very frankly, it will get a bit sticky on occasion, particularly when you are dealing with a bulky missile or a stubborn gun pod, and the time allotted for loading is dwindling down to a matter of minutes. Each man on the crew is certified by our own squadron standardization crews, but not before he has undergone some pretty intensive training. And this includes the lieutenant acting as officer in charge of loading. That brings us to the missile maintenance and storage area. This is where the 316s live. The dimensions and physical layout of this area, like the munitions area, may vary from base to base. But what goes on within the missile assembly and checkout bays will remain basically the same wherever you are assigned. The work here involves the disassembly checkout and reassembly of missiles. This can simply mean periodic maintenance where they are checked and put back into storage, or it can well mean preparation for delivery to the flight line for loading. In either event, it is a complicated step-by-step -step operation calling for skill, a detailed knowledge of the system being worked on, and massive doses of both the checklist and relevant TOs. The men operate as teams, regardless of the particular task at hand or the system involved. I know all of you became acquainted with the checklist and technical order during your training period at Lowry Air Force Base. Out here, we live with them. In the MMS, you don't move without the appropriate checklist or TO. Of course, this does not apply during your off-duty hours. <laughs> that brings us to the last group represented here today, the 464s. Explosive Ordnance Disposal. EOD is something of a story unto itself. All members of the section are volunteers. All have a munitions-oriented background in that they come from the 461 or 462 career fields, and all have completed courses in special schools at either Fort McClellan, Alabama, or Indian Head, Maryland. Their primary mission is a threefold one. Respond to all aircraft emergencies and eliminate any possibility of explosive hazard. Monthly cleanup and removal of all explosive residue from the local bombing ranges. And provide both instruction and assistance to local fire and law enforcement agencies when requested. They are a talented, dedicated group of men. But we don't like to see them on the flight line. If they are on the line, it means we've got a problem on our hands. I was only kidding about that last comment. Actually, we're darn glad to see him around. Well, you've seen the areas where you'll be assigned and some of the men you'll be working with. In a few minutes, I'm going to introduce you to Captain Stanger, who will take all of you to the flight line. There, you'll watch the preparation and loading that will take place prior to the launch of four aircraft for a tactical demonstration. But before you go, I'd like to get one very important point across to each of you. Although it might seem like organized confusion during the loading operations for a tactical demonstration, you can rest assured it is not. These men are all highly trained. Each one knows exactly what the other is doing at all times, how much time it takes, and how to do it properly and efficiently. And no one makes a move without the checklist. You've all had a lot of training in theory. Now, 
you're going to continue training in your various fields until maximum proficiency is achieved. How much time it takes is entirely up to you. Your theory is now going to be put to practical application. I wish you all good luck. Men, this is Captain Stanger. He will show you the flight line. Good luck. This is the final step before launch. Pull all pins and safing devices. The weapons are armed. The last man the pilots see before launch is from the munitions maintenance squadron. After recovery, the first men the pilots see are the men from the MMS. These munitions maintenance specialists make sure the weapons release and gun systems are electrically and mechanically safe before the aircraft returns to the flight line parking area. The role you men will play in the execution of our mission intact cannot be overemphasized. While we have dealt primarily with conventional weaponry, TAC is also capable of supporting nuclear commitments as well. Your training and certification program must support both commitments. It is a big job, full of responsibility. There will be high spots and some low ones. Work hard, play hard. The Munitions Maintenance Squadron. Maintenance is our middle name.